back on this right here. Been doing a lot of valve adjustment. Um, probably, as far as the engine, it's what you're going to do the most when you get out there. Because right? everything else tends to, you know, engines last a long time. Valve adjustment may cover, valve adjustment may cover every 100,000 miles. Valve, an engine overhaul might be 200, 800,000. Realistically, that engine is going to last a long time. Now, go back and just talk a little bit for stroke theory. Okay, intake, piston comes down, air or air and fuel on a gas comes into the cylinder, piston comes back on up. That's my compression stroke. Both valves are closed. That's my next stroke. Power. We're either going to have a spark plug fire and gas or that diesel fuel injector is going to spray fuel in the cylinder into the hot air and ignite. One way or the other, it's going to cause the explosion and drive the piston down for the power stroke. And then we come back up for the exhaust. Now, until this point, we've been talking that strokes are from top dead center to bottom dead center. Okay? In this instance, though, we're going to change that. Because that's, that's just really the, the glossy, easy way of doing it. But when you start getting technical on it, that's not the case, okay? What we've got here is we've got a valve timing spiral drawn on here. And what we're doing is when you look at that center line come down through there, okay? Label that at the top as TDC and the bottom as BDC, okay? Label the top as TDC and the bottom as BDC. Intake stroke begins at 20 degrees before top dead center when the intake valve opens. The intake valve will continue to be open and the blue line drawn in here is the intake stroke. You can label that on your paper. Why does that intake valve open so early? A couple reasons. Part of that is that it's part of valve overlap, what's valve overlap? Both, both intake and exhaust valves are open at the same time, what are we doing there? You guys remember that term at all? Scavenging. Scavenging, okay? So we're cracking open that intake valve just a little bit early so that we can push out all the exhaust gases so that by the time the exhaust valve closes, we're not pulling in any, there's nothing in that cylinder but either fresh air or we're bringing in fresh air and fuel in the gas, right? So that thing will stay open all the way around over here to 50 degrees after the bottom dead center. Because what's going to happen is as that piston comes down to bottom dead center and starts back up again, there's still a flow of air coming into that cylinder. If we decide to shut it off right at bottom dead center, you're going to lose 50, there's extra 50 degrees that we can still pull more air and fuel in. And the, and the secret of any horsepower is breathability. A diesel, I can turn that baby up to where it is just a hose pouring fuel into a cylinder almost. But we still got to match air to fuel. So if I cut off the amount of air, I'm either going to be rolling a lot of black smoke for no good reason, so going out the pipe at four bucks a gallon, okay? Or um, I'm going to be lacking power because it's just like a person with asthma or they have a breathing condition, we're going to shut off how much air they can breathe in their lungs. Are they stronger or weaker than they would be normally? If they're going to be weaker, I can't bring enough air in. So that motor is going to lose power. It's going to be weaker. Okay? okay. And that intake valve will come back in a second. The intake valve is going to stay open all the way around. So approximately 50 degrees after bottom dead center. 
at approximately 50 degrees after bottom dead center, ABDC, the intake valve will close. Yes, after compression part after intake, it's going to be compression. Okay, now my pistol's moving back up in the cylinder. Okay. Okay. Now we're on compression stroke. Both valves are closed. Both valves need to be sealed. I'm compressing the air, I'm compressing the air fuel mixture that's trapped inside it. The intake valve is closed. Okay. When the intake valve closes, that begins the compression stroke. Pistol move up in the cylinder toward top dead center. Talk to get the top dead center. However, compression stops just the pistol still moving up. But we're going to start the power stroke just a little bit early. Okay? And that power stroke. Somewhere in this window, and we can do that up just a little bit more maybe. Somewhere in that window, is when we're gonna, is when we're gonna fire. Okay? The right fire where that's gonna be. The compression stroke will continue on toward top dead center and at about 0 to 20 degrees before top dead center the injector will spray or the spark plug will fire starting the power stroke. And then we'll start our power stroke over here. Okay. Now, if I wait until I get right to top dead center and ignite that fuel, then by the time it comes and gets a full explosion, my piston's already going to be moving down the cylinder. Okay, how many power have we got in here? Okay, I knew, I knew Zach would put his hand up for sure, but okay. Okay. We got get some brush going, it threw a little gas on it. How does it sound when it goes? Okay, it doesn't it, it's not instantaneous bang, is it? You get that boom sound, right? Where it's, it's drawn in air and it it doesn't it doesn't just go bang and explode right then. It takes a just a millisecond to be able to ignite and go. And then all of a sudden we're roaring and hurling, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll pop up. And then all of a sudden, boom, and then you got it. Okay, so it takes a delay. There's a there is a uh, injection delay or delay timing. Uh, and what from the moment that we actually spray the fuel in or spark the spark plug before it actually explodes. So what happens is is we're going to fire somewhere, fire somewhere, um, probably the smallest I usually end up seeing is just a couple degrees, but somewhere, and I'll just put it zero for the lack of a better term, zero to 20 degrees before top dead center. Okay? There's a few old ones out there that are probably sitting at zero, for, but for the most part, you're going to see those probably in the 10 to 20 range. The Kubotas right here are set at 20 to 22 degrees before top dead center. Okay. That way you get that whoop. And by the time it hits top dead center, that piston starting down, I got the full brunt of the explosion pushing down on it. Okay. Now if we do that a little bit too soon, let's say we decide to fire that at 30 degrees before top dead center. Okay. Think about what's going to happen inside that engine. It's going to try to try to go a little bit backwards. I've got a piston moving up, and then I've got the explosion pushing down at the same time it's coming up. Well, what you get initially, and I can do a lot of erosion on the piston to get a spark back. Okay? Sometimes you get that when you're burning oil. Sometimes you get that with uh, a poor quality fuel in there. But you get that spark now. Okay? You've got a valve timing when the valves open and close. But now we've got to also throw in, instead of valve timing, Ignition timing. When do we spray that injector? When do we fire that spark plug? Okay. You understand that that's a that is a, st a static timing, which means that this is where we set it at. But when we start looking at dynamic timing, 
with how, it still takes the same amount of time to fire the fuel. Okay? It takes however amount of time to fire that fuel. Let's say that it's five milliseconds. Okay? If my engine's running at 600 RPM, and then my engine's running at 3,000 RPM, it still takes five milliseconds to fire that fuel. What do I got to do? What do you think I got to do? The engine's running faster, but it still takes that same amount of time to fire the fuel. I got started earlier, right? I got to start spraying that earlier. I have to advance the timing as the RPMs go up because the engine's moving that faster. Five times faster from 600 to 3,000. It's run five times faster, yet it's still taking that five millisecond lead time. If I, if I kept the same timing at 3,000 RPM, my, my piston's going to be back down the cylinder before I actually fire that cylinder. It's going to be on the downstroke. Okay? What we got to do is we've got to advance stuff. Okay. This is going to be variable. This might even be higher than that based on running. So my power stroke comes down to about right here. I'm going to cut that one off. Okay. At about 50 degrees before bottom dead center. The exhaust is going to open. The power stroke begins at the moment the spark plug fires or the injector sprays and that will start the combustion process. The power stroke will be when the piston is driving downward and the power stroke goes until the exhaust valve begins to open at about 50 degrees before bottom dead center, BBDC. That's when the exhaust valve opens. My exhaust, I'm not going to wait till the end to get my exhaust elbow. Realistically, when it's, you know, it's already gone from, it's gone from top dead center from the full run of the explosion down to about 130 degrees of stroke in the power band, 50 degrees before bottom dead center. I'm going to go ahead and open that anyway. It's really not doing a whole lot of pushing on the exhaust um, or push on the crankshaft. But I've got a lot of exhaust build up in there, and I still got some pressure in the cylinder. So I'm going to go ahead and crack the exhaust valve open now. If I've still got some pressure in the cylinder and that exhaust gas is in there, it's going to automatically start coming out the exhaust. So I'm going to get a flow before the piston ever gets down to the bottom of that center and coming back up again. Okay? So all of this right through here is my exhaust stroke. And then about right here, which would be 20 degrees after top dead center, ATDC, your exhaust will close. Okay. That's the other half of that valve overlap. The exhaust valve opens at approximately 50 degrees before bottom dead center and will remain open all the way as the piston is traveling up in the cylinder and will close at approximately 20 degrees after top dead center, ATDC. While I've still got exhaust gases flowing out, I crack open that intake valve to start the intake stroke because I've already got a flow going. It's just going to go with it to go. Okay, It's going to help jump start my intake stroke. At the same time, it stays open a little bit longer because now I'm starting to get it stronger on the intake and it's going to flush the rest of those exhaust gases out of there. The exhaust gases are just a waste if you're, you know, when you come up to compression and power. It's just, it's, it's, you burn everything up out of it for the most part. If I don't want it in there to take some space. Okay, so it. let's get it out of there. Okay. The spiral shows valve overlap. We have the intake valve open for 20 degrees before top dead center, the same time the exhaust valve is open, and then the exhaust valve closes at about 20 degrees after top dead center. That 40 degree period is valve overlap.